Hello and welcome to ProCell TV. Today I'd like to welcome David Apparicio from uh, the Royal Mail, specifically the Post Office, to talk about a pretty thorny subject and an interesting one that's uh, in the public domain, which is all about are graduates really ready for the world they enter into? So David, um, from your perspective, you had a lot of experience with graduates. How ready do you think they are to work within your company? I think there's two areas uh, on this. There's, um, there's an element of maturity, I find, with graduates. That's uh, an interesting one. I'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah. And there's another area about experience. Okay. Uh, maturity, invariably, graduates are younger. And so they haven't got all the life experiences that many of us have. Yeah. And, and that, I think that poses a, a whole range of issues because they're used to a, a university life. They're used to a school life. It's not the same as business life, so that's a, that's a, and they just haven't grown into that yet. So, are you talking about some kind of sort of finishing school for graduates before coming to work in sort of major organisations such as yourselves? I think there is um, there, there's a couple of areas. One, the degrees that people are doing no longer align to what we're doing in business. Yeah. And then two, we need to understand that individuals do. It's like the old classic. We teach people how to write, um, how to read, and how to talk at school, but we don't teach them how to listen. Mm, yeah, so that whole area of listening is not, in no way is covered in the curriculum. And we don't teach anyone how to behave uh, and how to um, work on their relationships with people. So there's a whole area yeah. about just simply listening and then working with people that's just not touched on at all. Okay, also, how, how can they enhance those in readiness for the workplace? Things like emotional intelligence and lots of interpersonal uh, training can be quite fun. Uh, lots of it you can use both within the work context, but you can make quite fun exercises out of getting them to go out to the pub, oh, yeah. uh, get them to go to a <laughs> nightclub and practice those interaction skills. Okay. Are you suggesting then, David, that, you know, with the, I'm sure industry will echo what you're saying, that um, universities should change what they're doing? De oh, definitely. I think there's, um, I've got a real passion um, around lots of what we do in both business yeah. and in university, the educational system, is based on something which I would call that was born out of the industrial age. We've gone through several different, you know, te technological age. We've talked about an information age. We talk about virtual ages. Everyone's coming up with a different n name for whatever yeah, yeah. it is. But what it isn't is the old industrial age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way that we operate, the way that we communicate, the way that we tra train people, and the whole education system is based on something from 100, 200 years ago. Um, I find it fascinating because if you look at, say, one of these dot-com type organisations, a very highly spec IT organisation the individuals that they get into that are, they're texting all the time, yeah. they're using uh, mobile phones, they're using um, the internet, they're actually w almost continually logged into the web, the world wide web my children for example, they get the DTs if you disconnect them <laughs> I'm serious, they really they're into it, but what they then do is they learn in a completely different way Everything that they learn on the internet, everything they learn about mobile phones, IT, is quite intuitive. So they just look at it, they pick it up, and they know how to do it. Now, the likes of you and I, yeah. from a different age, we're not able to do that. Uh, if you think of how people communicate, whether they're on you know, Facebook or YouTube and all those sorts of things, yeah. all the messages are short and sharp, and, yes. it, uh, and it's one-way communication. They're not necessarily expecting a response back. So if, uh, if um, people text you, it's very brief and it's very short. And then people have started translating texting um, language into email. Um, and so the language is almost getting short and truncated. People don't know how to communicate. The art of communication seems to be lost because we're abbreviating everything and we're you know, distilling it down to the simple yes as a response or why. Or, yeah. you know, and that so people are actually forgetting how to communicate because of that when you then translate that into business you've got a whole range of people that are going to be now coming into work and they're used to almost communicating in one style and in one way 
Now, how complicated that's going to be for you know the older generation yeah. when you've got this new generation coming in and they're, com they're communicating in a completely different way. Okay, well, th thanks very much for uh, your input, David. Valuable as ever. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to to add? I think the thing for me is uh, for for many years. I think going back to the industrial age yeah. argument I put forward before. I think in many areas we are still training people from uh, a bygone age whilst they're at university. So if you think of you know, half a dozen key roles in any organisation, they'll have, let's, let's call it um, a financial controller director as one of them. We'll end up with a um, operations type person, we'll have a sales and marketing type person. When you look at some of the degrees that we're doing now, they're not equipping anyone to step in and do those roles. Now, invariably, when any individual gets someone to join their organisation as a graduate, it's on a fast track, and we're fast tracking them to those roles. Yes. But the training that they've got doesn't align to any one of those roles. So, for me to have a HR, communications, you know, corporate social responsibility, to have degrees that you know really cover off that area and then give them the depth within that area would be a real boon to business. Okay. Thanks very much for giving up your time today, David. No it's a pleasure as always, and hope to see you soon. Thank you.